menstruation clots, period clots. We're going to have a clotty topic today and uh, I made a similar video about things to do with clotting and looks like uh, YouTube didn't really like the images that I used to them. So this is an update video in case you don't see it in your suggestions, then this one might be, it might pop up. So I'm making it as uh, an update video. Now it's very important for you to understand several things that we can have clots, that is period clots that are normal, some others are not. I'm sure you remember the first time you woke up and uh, found a clot there. But before you go that clot, several things happened. One, there is that pain, which is very excruciating before it passes out. And once it gets out, there is that very nice relief. Now the clot will look like a liver, you know, a piece of a liver. And it's very important for you to know what is normal, what is not normal. One, normal clots will be just tiny, and it will be just the initial stages of your menses. You're starting to get your menses today and uh, maybe tomorrow you're not supposed to have them throughout. So the size is supposed to be less than a grape size. Anything bigger than that, I think it's high time you understand your body. It's a good time to have a chat with your gyna. And uh, we are going to have a discussion around that so that you get to understand what are the causes of abnormal ones because we already know what normal is, something small less frequent if you get them on a regular basis or you get those which are usually bigger or larger than a grip size then it's high time we have this chart how do you get the clots we are going to get to that spot yeah we have four hormones very important in a lady they control the menses directly but we have others that we're not going to mention that usually control the menses indirectly but we are going to focus on the form. First one is a follicle stimulating hormone, which is usually produced to make an egg mature. That's a follicle. Now, after the egg matures, it triggers a production of luteinizing hormone, which is what now will trigger ovulation. Now, after ovulation, something can happen. You can become pregnant or not. When you become pregnant, there is a hormone which is very important called progesterone, and this is what will maintain the pregnancy. That will make sure that the lining is there intact to service the baby throughout the pregnancy. But then something can happen. You didn't become pregnant, and now you need to demolish the wall and build a new one. So that's where estrogen will come in, and this is the time when you start getting your menses. Now, we are focused on the menses. During this time when you're getting your menses, this is when you have the highest likelihood of getting the clots, and this is how the class forms you have your body knowing that you didn't become pregnant so what it produces is uh, prostaglandins this they are lipids so they'll go and trigger the wall to start contracting and this will force the lining to fall off it falls off gradually so it doesn't just fall everything doesn't fall off so gradually blood will accumulate at the base of the uterus and this is where because blood will accumulate there it's going to form clots and the clots will be dissolved by the factors that will be produced by your body and by now you're not some several things can happen to the clots. Now, two things mainly. One, it can be you don't have enough factors to dissolve the clots. Now, this is pointing towards the clotting system. Vitamin K, you know the factors, yeah? And also, it can be that you're producing a lot of blood to a point where the factors that are normally being produced by your body, which is very normal, the clotting system is very normal, but the blood is too much such that the clotting factors are not enough to dissolve everything. So by this time, when the cervix opens, you still have the clots, it will pass out, but it's very painful when it's getting out. Now let's get to some particular disorders. The first one which usually come to your mind will be fibroids. Yeah? I'm not saying that this is a major cause, it's one of the contributing factors. You might be having other conditions Let's start with fibroids. You have fibroids, and by now you understand we have several types. These are just growths, they are not cancerous, but they grow due to you having growth factors. You have estrogen, which is one of the culprits, which is highly associated with the same. We don't know how they form the fibroids, but we know some of the things that can make them grow, like become a little bit bigger. And this explains the reason why you, when you become pregnant, most of the people usually have them either disappearing or just them remaining in the same size. But sometimes the fibroids can make you infertile, so it becomes very hard for you to conceive based on a how they are affecting the uterus or the cycle because they affect the cycles and this is one of the major cause of getting the clots. Another factor can be endometriosis. We've had a conversation around this one as well. There's a video about the same. So this is basically endometrial lining growing in other areas apart from the uterus where it's likely supposed to be growing in. 
this is kind of like inviting people to a party you organize a party but then you send them the wrong addresses so you find that uh, they're showing up in other areas which they're not supposed to show up at and uh, yeah that's the fibroids for you they can disrupt the cycle can make uh, even uh, the bleeding even heavier and uh, this is one of the reasons you can get the clots another one is adenomyosis and this is uh, the extra thickening of the endometrial lining and the extra thickening means that you're going to have more blood when it comes to the time when you're shedding off that wall which means that even if you have the normal amount of factors that are required to dissolve the clots you have more blood or more clots or bigger clots to dissolve so you're still going to pass out those hormonal imbalances i'm sure you've heard this term every now and then and this is now the major cause of everything because so many things can lead to the imbalances between your hormones it can be either you're producing more or less it can be due to you using either contraceptives or even your body having conditions that are leading to either overproduction or underproduction of some hormones one of which is uh, we have two of them that are very, very important. We have estrogen and we have progesterone. The balance, the ratio between them is very important. In case you have an offset of that, you're going to have all manners of things. Like for example, your body overproduces estrogen and you know some of the things that can cause that. Or you're taking in contraceptives that uh, will increase the amount of estrogen in your body. Estrogen is a building hormone, meaning that you're going to build a thicker wall and when you're sloughing off that wall, you're going to get the clots and by now you understand the reason why you're going to get them. We also have uh, another one which is now the clotting factor. They're very important if you underproduce them. It's a little bit uh, actually more interesting, not actually interesting, it's a little bit uh, more dire because you need to go and see a doctor so that it can be rectified either by taking drugs that will help in that condition and uh, this is actually a bit even simpler because we have tests which are very specific to you having clots. Like for example, you can just have a simple test like um, the fullimogram where they're going to check even the amount of platelets that you have because they form part of the clotting matrix. One of the tiniest example would be you are overproducing platelets and when you have excess of them, you have a high risk of getting blood clotting anywhere. I'll give you another offshore example. You know, when uh, you're taking in estrogen-based contraceptives, one of the risks that you're given is you can have DVT. It's quite not that much, but there is a risk of you getting them. So there's a higher association between you getting clots and having a lot of estrogen in your body, in your system. Let's go to the foods and how they affect or how they influence you getting the clots. Let's start with iron. Iron, very important. You need it, it's very essential. You cannot survive without it because you have red blood cells that require that same iron. Without it, you're going to have very low quality red blood cells and uh, the courage of oxygen to the body and out of the body, that's the CO2 from the body, it's going to be affected. So iron, how do you know that you have enough or the normal amount? Go to the closest hospital that has a laboratory that can test something that we call HB. HB is hemoglobin level. So if you have less iron, most probably you're going to have very low HB because it's very involved. It's involved in the production and manufacture of HB, which is a constituent of the red blood cells. So you go to that facility, you get tested for HB. It's supposed for a lady, because you're talking about a lady here, the ladies. It's supposed to be between 12.5 and 17.5. Anything in between, actually we prefer around 15. Anything lower, is uh, you have less iron or other factors that are usually uh, very essential when it comes to production of um, your red blood cells. It's very essential. Iron is one of the factors. You can even get iron deficient anemia, which is a topic for another day, but it's very essential. So make sure that if you are below 12.5, make sure you add that up in as much as you're not going to have high episodes of getting the clot. But there is another caveat here. You might be having low HB because you are losing a lot of blood due to you having a condition which is letting out a lot of blood. Maybe you have adenomyosis. So if you have that, it means that you're going to pack a lot of blood in the lining and when you're uh, getting rid of the same, it means that you're going to spend a lot of your blood 
meaning that you're going to be anemic. And this is when you are below 12.5, you have less HB. So yes, you can be having low HB and yet you're getting clots. That's the reason. So it's very important for you to make sure that you know exactly what's going on. And in such a situation, you need to eat things that will give you more iron. And I prefer diet, like for example, the liver, we have spinach, we have nuts. They are very essential. They give you iron. There is stinging nuts, which will also give you the same. And uh, you really need green leafy vegetables every time so that one you are replacing the iron which is being lost through the blood that you are going to uh, get out especially if you usually get those heavy bleeding and at the same time you are benefiting from other things that you are being provided for by the diet instead of taking the supplements diet i prefer diet because it's one stone and several birds as you continue looking into why are you getting adenomyosis another thing is highly processed foods and in this category you're going to find so many things like we have proteins we have carbohydrates address all of those even supplements they are part of this because they are refined you, are, you have refined something into something that your body can easily be able to absorb if you are a lady you usually suffer from uh, issues to do with your cycle try as much as possible to eat healthy the meat moderate especially the red meat reduce that um, dairy products actually if you can cut that out because of the growth factors you're going to get the proteins you're going to get from uh, that milk we also have things like smokies we have sausages we have um, cakes especially because of the sugar it's highly refined anything highly refined will offset will create a condition like an inflammatory condition in your body try to stay away from things that will encourage your body to be in an inflammatory condition let's go to several other things that you can do I'm not sure whether they work, but we have claims of them working. One of which is onion juice. That one, you take an onion, you cut it into pieces, you boil that, you take that water for a month, you're going to feel the changes. It doesn't affect each and every person. We have a study, there's a study I looked into. I'm sure if I remember, I'm going to attach it here. If not, there is a study I talked about um, menstruation clots and onions, the onion juice. That one, onion juice, it's a little bit... Uh, Let's say something that has been there for quite a time, especially in the Asian countries, whereby you take the juice and it improves uh, the disorders that usually come with uh, menstruation, with a cycle, like heavy bleeding. And uh, we have PCOS and all those conditions. And there was a marked improvement in the people who are in that study. And it looks like something that I would encourage you to go and try out, but don't make it like a silver bullet. It's not uh, like a cure. In case it doesn't work, move on to the other thing or even combine. But make sure you're not doing this at home. Go and consult with your gynecologist or someone who knows better, someone who you're going to give your history about so that they can get to pinpoint exactly what's going on with your body because it can be something as simple as uh, something that can be corrected uh, surgically or maybe just something you take get some drugs and uh, it goes so make sure first of all you go and consult your doctor another one which i'm very skeptical about is castor seed oil that one has been used since forever and we have so many uses that are being claimed online and um, there's several things that i've seen people say and um, the reason why i'm not recommending is the fact that we don't have enough studies covering this uh, the effects of castor seed oil so that it can comfortably recommend to people now we have negative effects we have the good effects from the same but this does not mean that it's not functional the fact that uh, we don't have studies suggesting the effect or the good effects of the same it doesn't mean that it's not working it it's Simply because we don't have researchers being interested in the topic. And I think I would want you to get interested in the topic. We need to research and get to see whether it's something that we can actually use. Because we have so many claims of castor seed oil being used in uh, several ways. Like for example, applying it on your tummy to regulate your cycle, to reduce the clots, to reduce the pain. So many things. And we have so many people claiming the benefits of the same. So maybe you can try. I'm not suggesting it. I mean directly suggesting it anyway this platform is here to educate people not to suggest things for you to use i'll come here and tell you what works what might work that is when i'm skeptical that's for example what i'm talking about the castor seed oil and uh, something that is worth trying 
So castor seed oil is something that is worth trying, but it's very essentially very important for you to also know that it can come with one not working as intended or even giving you negative effects. The reason why I might not recommend it is because solely because I don't have scientific information to back my claims. So when you're going to try it out, you're trying it at... Uh, you know, the rumors that we have out there, not because we have proof, the scientific proof or the same. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work. It means that it might be working, but we don't know how it works. Vitamin E, nuts, green leafy vegetables, and that's why I usually tell you, if you're a lady, make uh, the plants your friends. Make sure you have a lot of them each and every day, the fruit. And I'm sure we have a conversation around the sugar that comes with the fruit. Ignore that all the time. Make sure that you take a fruit a day. Make sure the day does not end without having something green somewhere, either fruit or vegetable somewhere if you are a lady. It's very essential. You might be having a normal cycle. Nothing is going wrong. But um, you need to maintain that condition forever. So make sure at least you include something green in your diet each and every day. Some nuts here and there, some liver, some red meat. In moderation, don't take excess of that. So make sure each and every day, one, you avoid anything which is highly processed. The supplements. Uh, we have the sugars that are out there in cakes, in uh, the donuts, in the uh, mandazi, and all that. But uh, we still have another conversation around wheat and what it does. A lot of rumors out there. But still, that's a topic for another day. I have so many topics by the, by, the end, uh, by the end of this video. I have so many things that we are going to discuss. Anyway, medical approach. Now you go to a hospital because you've seen that this is a condition that is worth going to a hospital and uh, you want to have that treated. We have several things that can be done. Like, for example, the clotting panel. We have so many things that can be tested. But then this will mean that you'll have to go and see your doctor. We have things that they can suggest. Like, if you are having less of the clotting factors, we have things that you can be given that will help in dissolving the clots. We have drugs for that. But before you even get the prescription for those, you'll have the tests done in the laboratory. Another thing is we have hormonal contraceptives or non-hormonal contraceptives like copper IUD. Copper IUD, you know, it will reduce uh, you getting the menses. So by doing so, you're going to reduce the effects of or even having the clot. This is still treating the symptoms. We also have hormonal contraceptives, like uh, the ones, the daily pills. We have those other ones that uh, you usually take that contain either progesterone or estrogen. So the ratio between those two will give you the clot. So you can be given those, but remember, you're also treating the symptoms. We have instances, most of them, uh, when you go to a hospital, your doctor will give you contraceptives. The reason for that, it can be because, you know, most of those conditions or most of the disorders, we don't know how to cure them or how to treat them. So the best thing that they can do is just to give you something that will either temporarily reduce the amount of blood that you're passing out or it will just affect your cycle in a way that you're not totally going to get the menses. We have another last option. This is nothing is working. You have a lot of those disorders like you have fibroids and all that. So that this is beyond salvageable level. So this is hysterectomy, which is the removal of the uterus. This is the last thing that you need to do. And this is due to dire conditions that will even endanger your life. Like for example, you're having acute anemia and this is the one that is coming from you losing a lot of blood from you getting the menses. We also have conditions like uh, having cancers, adenomyosis, and we have so many things that can influence you getting that removed. It's very essential to go sit with a doctor, have a lengthy conversation before you decide on any of those. Before I sign out, it's very essential for you to know that um, it's normal to get the clots. It's actually normal, but they're not supposed to be frequent. And also, they're not supposed to be large ones, like, you know, the grape size. It's not supposed to be larger than that. So in case you're getting large ones or you're getting them more frequently, it's high time. Instead of getting the remedies, go see a doctor because this is one of the best way of uh, getting to know exactly what's going on. And from this spot, you can easily be able to mitigate the factor. 
that's actually underlying so that you can treat this in the long run otherwise if you treat the symptoms it can keep coming back keep coming back and all that so i hope this was an educative video another video i would want you to watch i actually have no idea but youtube will just suggest you the best video i'm also curious to see which one they are going to suggest either here or here so yeah click on that video and get to be educated and uh, i'm back to making a little bit more of a uh, reproductive health videos because they are kind of the conditions are kind of out there there's so many so we're going to cover that and then we go to the skin and then we're going to go to cancers and uh, we go to now the vital organs and uh, yeah this is health so we're going to cover the whole body and everything that is going to touch your health see you in the next video